Every season of Survivor is a story. There are our main characters, sidekicks, comic reliefs, and villains. A good season of Survivor tells a compelling story that has you rooting for someone and against someone else in hopes that it all ends in a satisfying conclusion. Each story that we're going to look at together will go through one character's journey from beginning to end from the time they're introduced until they inevitably get their torch snuffed or win the game. We will look at every character moment and strategic move to determine whether they were a hero or a villain and whether they were a good or bad strategist. And with that, welcome to Once Upon an Island. Now for reference, we're only gonna be observing what the TV show is showing us and what stories being told through the show. No future seasons will be mentioned as the story and characters here have no idea about what happens in those future seasons. All character moments and strategic moves are interpreted with the mindset of what the story is trying to tell us. And now with that. 39 days, 20 people, one. Survivor. Here we go, season 20, Heroes versus Villains. Survivor's first all returning season in 12 seasons, and Sandra's back for the first time in 13 seasons. Now you may recall that once Rupert was voted off in the post-merge of Pearl Islands, how Sandra was basically flying solo until the end, where she missed having the first ever perfect game by only one vote. But Survivor's changed a lot since she first played, and so the question I have is, has Sandra changed? Well... Last time I was mean, and this time I'm meaner. You know, I'll lie, I don't care. But I'll make up a good lie. Yeah, that sounds actually exactly the same as before. Six years later, and this is the same Sandra, which I love. Survivor's back in Samoa for the second time ever, and upon arriving at the starting mat, we see there are three other winners this season with Tom, JT, and Parvati, but also Rupert is back from Pearl Islands as well. So hey, Sandra has at least one friend on this season, though he is on the other side. Jeff then asks if anyone feels like they're on the wrong tribe, and Sandra's hand immediately shoots up, and we get a discussion on what even is a hero and a villain in Survivor. Boston Rob says, it's really just a matter of perspective. And Tom says, this season you may see heroes play like villains and villains play like heroes. But now it is time for reward, where each tribe has to dig up bags and fight their way back to their mats. When Sandra gets her turn, she decides to try and shame Sugar by undoing her bra. And this does not work, but it does make Suri say Sandra is definitely a villain now. At first she was wondering how she got on that tribe, but now she gets it. We then go to the villains camp where the show makes a point of portraying everyone else as lazy and Boston Rob as the only competent one in the bunch, which is then interestingly contrasted with Sandra comparing herself to Rob. Get your ass up that tree, will ya? Oh, at least you'll land in the water. You wanna make a bet? What? If he makes it or not? I'll bet you a dollar. The person that I think I'm most like is Boston Rob. Seeing Rob here, it reminds me of when he played the first time. I loved him. Okay. All right. All right. A All right. dollar. A dollar that he won't make it to the top, and you're saying a dollar that he'll do it? He's going to do it. That's someone I could see myself aligning with until it's time to cut his throat. Man. Right to Sandra. Ah, winner. Man. From, from Boston Bob, the loser. <laughs> Boston Bob. Rob is shown to be the only good one here, and now Sandra is associated with him. Interesting. Very interesting. But I think there are some other fascinating issues surrounding this tribe. The first is quite simple. There's this guy, Russell Hance. He's an unknown commodity since he just played on season 19, which was a few weeks prior to this one, and no one has seen his season yet, so he's kind of here with a clean slate. No one knows anything about him. But in bigger news, talks are happening amongst both tribes about Parvati, James, Suri, and Amanda teaming up to make this Micronesia 2.0. And uh, yeah. Everyone's worried about this. If we go try swap and people have to draw buffs off a tray, it could happen. They could team up and it could be game over for everyone. Sandra says when push comes to shove, people will team up with those they know from before no matter what they say. But at the immunity challenge, it all comes down to the puzzle which her and Boston Rob win. And yeah, that's it for the premiere. And I must say this is not really Sandra 2.0 like I expected. This is Sandra 1.5. Same Sandra, different year, and hey, I'm enjoying her so far. By the way, do you like the content I make? Well, if you want to pick what videos I make and watch everything up to six months early, then consider joining my Once Upon an Island Patreon. There is now a free tier if you don't want to pay anything, and you can cancel any time, and if you do support the channel financially, there is a 15% discount if you sign up for one year 
Thank you for your support. Episode 2 is quite simple for Sandra as her story takes a backseat to a lot of nonsense happening on both tribes. But as Sandra says herself, if it doesn't involve me, I don't care. And uh, yeah, neither will we in this story. We're laser focused on Sandra. We again see Boston Rob as the only good one on their tribe, but Sandra is portrayed as right there with him in terms of frustration with how everyone else is acting. I mean, the machete is missing and no one knows where it is. Clearly someone hit it, but yeah, this tribe is kind of a mess at camp right now. They then win immunity thanks to Rob, and in episode three, we see Russell, the unknown entity from season 19 who is married, cuddling up and laughing with Parvati all night long. It is annoying almost everyone, they're clearly flirting. I mean, Parvati is clearly flirting with a married man and she doesn't care and he doesn't care. Their tribe then gets smashed in the immunity challenge and back at camp, the debate is between Parvati and Randy for who should be voted off. Parvati because of all the threats on the other side and Randy because he's the easy vote that won't make waves. Coach approaches Sandra about what she thinks and she says, hey, if it ain't me, I'm voting with the majority. I don't care. As I said before, Sandra seems pretty unchanged from Pearl Island. But then we go to tribal council where people are airing each other's dirty laundry. And Sandra says, Coach or delegate, you do this and I'll do this and we'll go do that. But then when you look, Coach is gone two miles out. Sandra, you only mentioned me in that. And I don't know if it's a jibe at me, but that's a bunch of bull. I collected firewood for three hours, thank you very much. Nobody's out there collecting firewood like I am. I've been working hard around camp and I resent you for saying that. In fact, why do you think we have the worst shelter in survivor history? Because like herding cats. Sandra does not care how offended Coach is. Keep that in mind. Sandra then brings up the lost machete and Jeff says, what do you mean the machete's lost? And Sandra says it must have grown legs and walked off because it isn't back at camp. What she doesn't know and that we know is that Russell hid it from everyone. So they all go to vote and Randy is gone nine to one. Randy, the tribe has spoken. Sandra tried to call me out and drive up tonight and it was just very disheartening. I'm human, I'm sensitive. I'm probably more sensitive than most people. I just hide it behind a lot of things that I've done and accomplished and behind a lot of machismo. It's gonna be all for nothing except one. It's Sandra said tonight and it's not even true, man. Coach or delegate, you do this and I'll do this and we'll go do that. But then when you look, coach is gone two miles out. What did I do to deserve Sandra saying that tonight? There's never been somebody like me out here and there's never going to be anybody like me again. I did noble things out here and I look ignoble. All of this, man. I don't need it. I'm the man and I don't need anybody to tell me or validate that. Why doesn't anybody ever say anything good about me? Am I that bad of a person, man? I can't do it, man. My heart's not in it. I might just leave tonight. Yep, Sandra's comments about Coach slacking was the final straw. I mean, it's only episode four, but Coach is crying, and he's crying because of Sandra. This scene is never not funny. Thank you, Sandra. Thank you. She doesn't care that he cries, by the way, and in fact, he wants to quit, and she's like, yeah, okay, whatever. However, Coach doesn't quit. Boston Rob says he wouldn't have been much of a coach if he had quit. And I agree, if you're on Survivor and you're in a job like a therapist or a school principal, for example, uh, you shouldn't be quitting. It sets a bad example for those you're in charge of, those you're helping, and uh, coach shouldn't be quitting either. The villains win reward and it comes with a clue to the idol hidden somewhere in their camp. And Sandra says anyone who looks for it becomes target number one. So Russell Hans clearly takes this as a challenge because the first thing he does is he goes and looks for it. Sandra then pulls a Pearl Island's spying move here again and says, Russell, he's stupid and he's getting targeted next. Boston Rob says he has got to go. The villains win immunity and in episode five while everyone is bonding, doing some coach chi, which by the way, Sandra like laughs at while they're doing it. And Russell's off by himself looking for the idol. And I think it's very telling that eight people are together doing Coach Chi bonding and Russell by himself. The villains then win immunity thanks to Boston Rob and in episode six, Jeff says both tribes are going to tribal no matter what. Boston Rob wins individual immunity back at camp. He says, this is gonna be easy guys. A six can split our votes three, three. So if Russell does play an idol, then we'll just vote off Parvati instead. It's foolproof. It literally cannot fail if we split three, three. So we go to tribal council where Sandra says, yep, we all know Russell has the idol. And uh, yeah, Russell's pretending like he doesn't, but he's not a very good actor. So they all go to vote and you need to get in the ocean and wash your ass. I can't stand you and I can't wait for you to go home. Adios. I think I'm gonna take the target off of my back. No, not this way. Poverty. Are you serious? Thank you. This is indeed 
the hidden immunity idol. Any votes cast for poverty will not count. First vote, Russell. Russell, two votes, Russell. Poverty does not count. Poverty does not count. Poverty does not count. Poverty does not count. Tyson. Tyson, six person voted out of Survivor, Heroes versus Villains. Tyson. Tyson, chop spoken. Uh, what? How did Tyson get voted off? Who flipped and ruined their 3 3 split? Funnily enough, it was Tyson. Tyson got himself voted off because Russell tricked him, good for Russell, but bad for Sandra and Rob. The villains then lose immunity and back at camp, Russell's blaming everyone but himself for this loss. And while doing so, we see Sandra and Courtney, who are best friends by the way, having a moment when she trips and falls. It's quite hilarious. But then Russell and Rob talk about who to vote off next. I think we need to weed off the week. What do you suggest? One of these. One of who? Right here. You That's know. not a way to gather friends, I don't think. How do you two feel about that? I don't like it. Oh no, I think I think he's right. What kind of logic is that, Russell? That's a new one. All Rob wants is to keep his alliance strong, which I understand. Cause he knows once Courtney leaves, he's at my mercy. I'm a, I'm after him. He's after me. May the best man win. Whoever's better in the game, that's which one's gonna be here longer. And it's gonna be me. And he sees it coming. Wow, is Russell an idiot? Why would he say that right in front of them? I am completely baffled. So the plan is for Sandra, Rob, Courtney, and Coach to vote off Russell and force a tie because Russell, Parvati, and Danielle are tight and Jerry is flipped to them. So... First vote. Rob. Rob. Two votes, Rob. Russell. Russell, we're tied. Rob, tied again. Courtney, eighth person voted out of Survivor, Heroes versus Villains. Rob. You're a little man. Rob, the tribe has spoken. Coach wussed out. He voted Courtney and Sandra's alliance is falling apart fast. I mean, really at this point, all she has is Courtney. At the reward challenge, Coach has Sandra and Courtney sit out so they can win the feast, and the villains still lose. Even with their best players in, they still lose. This tribe is on a downward spiral. And back at camp, Jerry is mad at Sandra for some reason? I'm totally screwed in the immunity challenge, now you realize that, right? Yeah. Sandra and Courtney got out. It's like I looked at both of them and I said, you guys, can you do this? And they're like, um, I don't know. I don't know. I'm standing right here. I never said a word. I said whatever. You said, you said, no, you said, I don't know. It's like, so now it's me and Courtney's fault that you guys lost? No, no, it's not. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying, why did this stupid mistake get made again that we made last time? So you we said, need an I, immunity. I, we need to eat and we need to win, Sandra and Courtney. Why are you blaming me and Courtney? I'm not blaming why? you and Courtney. We didn't even do all anything. All I'm saying is that. I just don't understand. The minute we get back to camp and you guys don't have a meal, all of a sudden it's me and Courtney. The worst tribe ever put together is the villain's tribe. I should not even be here. I should be with the heroes. Cause I can't stand Jerry. I hate Cole. I hate Danielle. I hate Russell even more. So any of those four, I'm not gonna pick one above the other cause I equally hate them all. I agree, what did Sandra do? They didn't win without her and I doubt they would have won with her competing. Coach is obviously to blame here, not her. The villains lose immunity and Courtney says, crap, we're down five to two. We're kind of screwed. But Sandra has a plan. She says, Russell gets paranoid very easily and we could take advantage of that. So Sandra gives it a shot. I heard the coach was saying that he made a mistake and he wished he could go back. What mistake? In letting Rob go home. Mm -hmm. That he should have never made the choice that he made and that he's sorry and that he wanted to get rid of you. So I don't know about your homeboy. Oh, he ain't my homeboy. I don't trust him, obviously. You can't trust him because of that right there. I told Russell that coach was talking about voting for him. And Russell's so stupid, he ate that crap up. I'm telling you, he's like, oh my God, I can't trust him. And the sooner he goes, the better. So Russell, he don't know how to play this game. Yeah, he's done good so far, but with me, 
You don't know what he got himself into. Well, that was easy. Russell buys this lie hook, line, and sinker, and he relays it to Parvati and Danielle, who believe it as well. I mean, this couldn't go any better if Sandra wanted it to. The villains lose immunity, and they all go to vote at Tribal Council, and... Courtney. 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 Three votes, Courtney. Coach. 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 Ninth person voted out of Survivor Heroes vs. Villains and the first member of our jury. Coach. Coach. Travis Bogan. I've never seen such a disrespect for survival. This All-Stars on that tribe was survival of the weakest and most dysfunctional and most idiotic. It was through no fault of my own that I got voted out. and I didn't make a big mistake. I didn't make an ass out of myself. And so I think I got to that piece today. Russell, what's up, Parsifal? Russell, boom, right there. Hey, buddy, how you doing? Listen, I just wanted to tell you that I really don't respect your game. Bam! Out for the count. Since Coach is on the jury, it's time to track where each of these jury members stand with Sandra. I mean, it's not great with Coach. He kind of cried because of the way she made him feel because she made a mean comment about him. So, yeah, keep that in mind. Episode 9 has them still not merged, and I'm not sure why. But when they go to the reward challenge, Rupert and JT are like, whoa, Coach is gone? Clearly, there is a women's alliance over on the villain's tribe, which is funny because there's clearly not, but they don't know that. They have no idea, and it's I get what they're seeing. They see four men eliminated and Parvati's over there. So yeah, Black Widow Brigade 2.0. But then we get our matchups for this challenge and Sandra gets to face off against Rupert. And he says, And another rematch, Sandra and Rupert going back to the Pearl Islands, our seventh season. Love you. While Sandra will not tell Rupert she loves him back, she sure says that she loves Outback Steakhouse a lot. I mean, she says a lot. She says this during the challenge, and then when they win, she goes into even more detail about her love for the Outback Steakhouse and brings up how she is here while her husband is serving overseas in Afghanistan, and he loved Outback Steakhouse. After that delicious reward from Outback Steakhouse, the villains lose immunity again, and Sandra says, I don't got any more tricks up my sleeve, and I don't have any Outback Steakhouse. It's either Courtney or me going next. Russell says, I don't trust them both, but I do trust Outback Steakhouse. Parvati says, I think Sandra flips come the merge. And Russell says, I think Courtney flips. So we go to Tribal Council where Danielle paints a target on Sandra's back and Jeff actually steps in and defends her, probably because she loves Outback Steakhouse and that's the sponsor of this episode. She's not in my alliance and I've seen how she's playing the game and she's able to manipulate people. I've seen you put into people's minds different things that maybe weren't true just to stir the pot up. But Danielle, the question was trustworthiness, not big mouth. Well, that's kind of, she's just not been on my side. That's just not doing what you want her to do. Well, Why should I come to you and say hello when you don't come and say hello to me? You were Rob's like sidekick. Whatever Rob said to do, you went and did. And if that's exactly what you do with poverty. She's the boss and you but do I whatever she that. does. Okay. I don't. Tenth person voted out and the second member of our jury, Courtney. Courtney, tribe has spoken. Look, bitches. See you later. <laughs> this season, yeah, I was really lucky to meet Sandra, and Rob was amazing to meet too. Tyson, Parvati, actually, pretty much everyone on the villain tribe. Well, no, I'm gonna take that back. Just the people I listed. Episode 10 sees the villains getting a map to the heroes camp, and upon arrival, people start suggesting names for their new tribe. Jerry says, "What about the all villains?" Which immediately annoys Rupert and Colby. And Sandra says, "What about the Hillens?" But then we see her finally get a chance to talk to Rupert one on one. You know how some people forgive, but don't forget. Well, I don't forgive and I don't forget. Um, Courtney's the last person from my alliance. They didn't want me and Courtney over here together. Gross is the kingpin and, and Parvi's the second in command. You guys are done starting with the man. But whatever Russell says, agree to it. But he's lying if he says that the women are running the show. Gotcha. Sandra just gave me some really good information. Russell told us that Poverty used her immunity idol last night. That is not true. Russell might be running the show. And if Sandra is true, and I have to believe Sandra, Russell is playing us. Boy, this is where the game gets crazy. Here's the thing, Sandra's at the bottom of the villains. We know it, she knows it. So flipping to the heroes could be great because 
Rupert is loyal and would definitely bring her to final two. I really think you would. Though this season there's a final three, you get the point. But it's still risky. I like that she is trying something rather than just sitting on her hands. Rupert then talks to the heroes about what she said and JT says, come on, Sandra's a villain. You can't trust her. Russell is on our side now. We can trust him. I mean, does JT not see the irony here? Danielle then wins individual immunity and Sandra says, I want Russell out. But the heroes aren't targeting him, so I'm kind of stuck. So we go to tribal council where they all vote and... You know what, Jack? Sandra, not for you. Get out of here, for real? <laughs> Jerry, that one's for you too. Damn it. Thanks, Jerry. Sandra, these are both hidden immunity idols. Any votes cast for Sandra or Jerry will not count. Jerry does 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 not count. JT. JT, that's two votes, JT. 11th person voted out and the third member of our jury. JT. JT, Travis spoken. Let's get caught up on the jurors. Sandra and Courtney were best friends, so no doubt there about who Courtney would vote for come the end. And we never saw Sandra and JT interact. In fact, we never saw JT interact with Parvati either. He only interacted with Russell who backstabbed him. So I bet JT feels dumb now. He should have trusted Sandra. Back at camp, Russell is so mad that Parvati had an idol and didn't tell him. And Sandra's like, dude, I didn't know that you guys had two idols, let alone one idol. But Russell's a real control freak. Sandra wants him out. And she makes one more attempt to work with the heroes by having a long conversation with Colby, where she tells him everything she knows. Colby is convinced. Rupert's convinced. But can Amanda and Candace be convinced? Because if they can be, they would be up five to four over the villains. But that's the question. Can they be convinced? Russell then talks to Sandra about why she was even talking to Colby, as I said, a control freak and she plays it cool and gives him nothing. But then he tells her a hero has flipped to the villains. What? Who? If Sandra picks their side, they're up five to four. Why would any hero flip with this possibility on the table? Is Russell lying? Sandra says, I am number five with the villains and I hate Russell. I want to work with the heroes badly, so they better not screw me over. But then after Jerry wins immunity, Sandra pledges revenge. I'm voting for Russell because I've been waiting to take him down for 30 days, 30 days too long. It's time for revenge, and this is for Courtney, Boston, Rob, Tyson, and even Coach, who I don't care about, but I'll stick him in there too. In a frustrating series of events, it turns out that Candace of the Heroes Tribe really did flip. She's the Judas of their tribe, and she snitches to Russell about Sandra wanting him out. So Russell approaches Sandra, and she just denies, denies, and denies some more. And he says, I'm playing my idol tonight. I don't care what you do. And Sandra says, cool, I don't care you're playing your idol. Go for it but it is good she found out he even has another idol because she had no idea until now. So, Sandra talks to the heroes and... Candace went and told Russell every single thing that was said, including that I was on board with Rupert, Amanda, and the rest of them, and now we're screwed and now they won't trust us anymore after this. Why are you switching now? She's gone. I'm not switching. Listen, you, you're with us? We're okay. Sandra, you're good. Candace is on our side. We're voting for poverty. You're gonna help me, Candace? Or my what do you need me to help you? What do you want me to do? Are we going to do this? Yes. Okay, so yeah, if this thing be... doesn't work, it's Candace's fault. No. <laughs> so really, I mean, really, if it doesn't work, then Candace is the one that spilled the beer. Between Candace and JT, the heroes are kind of ruining everything that Sandra is trying with them. We then go to tribal council where Russell is feeling, oh, so cocky. He says out loud to everyone that Sandra is an easy beat in the final three, and he compliments every villain, except Sandra, who he says is just kind of existing. Wow, does he not care that the jury is witnessing all of this? So they all go to vote and hope I'm doing the right thing and playing it for myself this time. First vote, Amanda, Parvati, Amanda, two votes, Amanda, Parvati, we're tied, two votes, Amanda, two votes, Parvati, Parvati, Amanda, Amanda, that's four votes, Amanda, 12th person voted out in the fourth member of our jury. Amanda. Amanda, the tribe has spoken. Yeah, no, we I were... was losing my mind. Yeah, all right, come on. We've had it from day one. I don't I know how you guys one. did it. Yeah. Russell? Oh, my God. I am. I hate him. Like, we all hate him. He has got, I didn't realize when I was there. But, like, is he not the I nastiest did. person in the world? 
Oh my god. Yeah. It's been like that since day one. The beginning. It's so stressful. Like, you're like, so you'd be walking around, around right like day two, people are like, hey, where's the machete? And then like the bushes of Russell, and then he'd be like, what y'all doing? I think it's interesting how Ponderosa is openly showing everyone hates Russell. They're not even keeping it a secret this time, unlike in Samoa. What do they think about Sandra though? I don't know as of now. We never saw Amanda interact with Sandra on a one-on-one -on -one basis. The next day, in front of everyone left in the game, Rupert and Russell bicker with Russell making fun of Rupert and calling him names. I mean, this stuff will be passed on to the jury at Ponderosa, man. Everyone's witnessing the conversation. Parvati then wins individual immunity and Jeff reads an idle clue out to everyone. So back at camp, everyone scrambles. At the challenge, Jeff read a clue to the immunity item. So the minute we get to camp, and all of a sudden people just started running. The clue said there'll be a burning bush and in the shadow there'll be the immunity item. Candace and Russell start digging where there's this big red bush, but across from there, there's another big red bush. So I start digging and I see it. I can't believe I finally found something. Um, I'm nervous. I can't read this out here. I don't know where to put this. It's too big. I think I'm going to keep it for myself because I'm so damn creepy. Wow. Good for Sandra. It feels like Russell or Parvati has had every idol this season, so finally we get a change of pace on that one. However, Rupert puts a rock in his pocket without saying a word. Russell assumes it's an idol. Sandra's like, whatever, I'll play along. I don't care if they think Rupert has an idol as long as no one targets me. The villains decide to split their votes between Candace and Rupert, so at Tribal Council. Rupert, Candace, one vote Candace. Rupert, that's two votes Rupert. Candace, Rupert, that's three votes Rupert. Candace, that's four votes Candace. 13th person voted out and the fifth member of our jury. Candace, Candace, the tribe has spoken. Time for the go. Aside from her calling Candace out for flipping, they didn't really connect that we saw. Russell then wins immunity and back at camp, he openly gaslights and fights with Danielle. He's flipping on his own alliance. It's baffling. Just wow. Russell is a goat to be dragged to the end of this game. So they all go to vote and... First vote, Rupert. Danielle. Rupert, two votes Rupert. Danielle. Rupert, three votes Rupert. Danielle, we're tied. 14th person voted out and the sixth member of our jury. Danielle. Danielle, Travis spoke. Russell is insane. Like, I've never seen anyone so psychotic. I mean, you feel like you're in prison when you're around him. Because he's, especially when you're aligned with him, because he doesn't keep it. He stares at you all day long. He watches every single person, who they talk to, and then after they talk to them, he goes up to them and asks them what they talked about. And then he goes up to you and asks which, what you talked about to make sure the stories match up. I mean, he does this non-stop. He doesn't do any work around camp. He just sits there and stares at people to make sure that they're not trying to you know, get him off. Danielle was best friends with Parvati, so if Sandra wants her vote, Parvati needs to not be in the final three. Episode 13 brings with it the family visit, where we meet Sandra's uncle, who was by her and her mom's side as she passed away last year. Not only is Sandra's husband serving in the war, but her mom recently passed away too. This is one tough lady. During the reward challenge, Sandra tells the uncle to snatch Russell's water, but Jerry still wins, and she takes Parvati and Sandra with her on reward. Russell is so mad at Jerry that he ignores his wife to voice his anger. But while on said reward, Sandra gives us more insight into who she is as a person. My uncle is here only because my mom passed away. And he's my favorite uncle. He always helped my mom take care of us. When my mom passed, she was with him. It's been a year and a week since my mother passed. So that's why I write Mom sent help from above, and my husband can't be here because he's in Afghanistan, so having my uncle here and being here long enough to see him is, if it ends for me, I'm happy now. Better late than never, Sandra's story has really been backloaded though, as she only had three confessionals through the first seven episodes, and now the story keeps pushing her hard throughout the entire post-merge game. Parvati wins her second immunity, and Sandra says maybe Russell can go this time, so she talks to Rupert. I hate Russell. I want Russell out so bad I can taste it. But them girls won't grow. 
Everybody wants to go with Russell to the end because he's so bad that they'll, they'll, they'll win against him. That's why he's still here. The girls are still talking about getting rid of him. Are you with me or are you against me? I'm against you, Russell. Because okay. I've never been against her. But are you with me or are you against me? If you hit me, you're going home next. You ain't going nowhere. I know I ain't going nowhere. Oh. I know that. I know oh, so I'm you're telling me I'm going somewhere? No, I'm safe. Oh. I know I'm safe. I'm comfortable. You're the one that took. <laughs> Who invited Boston Rob back to the party? Are you with me or are you against me? <laughs> uh, what are y'all doing? Y'all being stupid? I mean, y'all own something? Y'all drinking over there? Because you're being dumb. I don't understand why Rupert is snitching. Maybe he thinks Russell will take him to the end? If anything, I think Sandra would take him to the end and not care about that. It doesn't make much sense. And I love how Sandra can kind of just do whatever she wants and say whatever she wants because Russell thinks she's a goat and he doesn't realize he's the goat. So we go to tribal council where Sandra votes for Rupert. I'll write your name again, and if I'm up there in the final three, you'll still give me the million dollar vote. Should I let you finish? No need. First vote, Rupert. Rupert, that's two votes, Rupert. Sandra, does not count. Sandra, does not count. 15th person voted out in the seventh member of our jury. Rupert. Rupert? The trap was spoken. I didn't see the hidden immunity idol. I thought maybe it could be out there. I know for a fact that I won't write Sanders' name down again for another million dollars. Finale time. It is Sandra versus Russell versus Parvati versus Jerry versus Colby. Well, holy crap, I forgot Colby was even here. He needs to go. If a hero reaches the end, they win. After that Rupert Tribal Council, Russell lays into Sandra for playing her idol and not telling him that she had one. And Sandra's like, I have to tell you about my idols. You don't tell me about your idols. Why I gotta tell you about my idols? And she makes a good point. Why does he need to know everything all the time? Parvati then wins her third immunity challenge and the writing is on the wall. Colby makes a last ditch effort to paint a target on Parvati by saying, keep me over Sandra and I can help you get out Parvati. But Russell doesn't care. He thinks he knows he can beat her. So Colby is voted off. Four to one. Colby, Travis spoken. Rupert and Colby are the last two boots, and in both cases, Sandra talked to them and tried to work with them, and it failed, but at least she tried. I think she actually made connections with both of them. We already know she has a connection with Rupert, but I think she made a connection with Colby as well. So at the final immunity challenge, it is a tight, tight race for who will win, Parvati, Jerry, or Russell. I say those three because Sandra isn't even close. As Russell pulls off the upset and upon arriving back at camp. You know why everybody wants to take you to the end? Because I already won and they'll win against me. Yeah. But I don't care, I'll take the $100,000 because I knew I wasn't gonna win again. And no matter what, in any circumstances, I'm keeping Sandra. I think she might get Courtney's vote and that's it. So I'm gonna use Sandra for me to win a million dollars. She can't okay. beat me. I want you in the final three because I think I can meet you for the million. All right. Straight up. I'll take the hundred thousand. You know how I feel. Russell won immunity. So essentially, I have to do whatever uh, Russell says because he's wearing the idol. I'm feeling wonderful because regardless, Russell's keeping me around because I'll never get a single vote. But I don't know about that. Russell is an idiot. Sandra has Courtney, Rupert, and Colby's votes. She only needs two more votes to win this game. It's a jury of nine. You only need five. And if she has three, does Russell really think he'll beat her and Parvati or Jerry? He's crazy. He doesn't know what he's talking about. And Sandra is taking full advantage. At tribal council, Jeff asks Sandra how she is feeling. And she says, eh, I know I'm safe because Russell told me to my face that he can beat me at the end right in front of the jury. The whole jury hears this. Well played, Sandra. Well played. So they all go to vote and first vote. Parvati. Jerry. Jerry. 17th person voted out and the ninth and final member of our jury. Jerry. Jerry. Chop spoke. It is now D39 and we get even more personal content from Sandra as she says no matter what, all she can think about is her kids and her husband, especially with him being in Afghanistan. She says in their marriage, the roles are well-defined. He serves in the military, she wins Survivor. Simple as that. Sandra says, I wanted Russell out and it just never happened. My game is defined by that and it never happened. But once again, like in Pearl Islands, Sandra had to navigate the post-merge game flying solo and did just that against all the odds with no immunity wins. But then after that touching scene, Sandra says, I am over Russell. And I'm gonna burn his hat. <laughs> are you gonna tell? Uh, are you kidding? That's how much game I got. 
<laughs> Russell is obnoxious. So I took his hat and I threw it in the fire. I don't care. He could take his bald headed tail to tribal council. It'll be all right. He could wear his buff on his head. He has a big bald patch right here. He doesn't want nobody to know about. But we've been here for 39 days. I've seen it a whole ton of time. No, I don't think it's about the money tonight. I think it's about the title of Soul Survivor. That's all Russell wants. And if that's what Russell wants, that's what I gotta make sure Russell does not get. Absolutely poetic. Russell burned a tribe member's socks in episode one of his first season, and now it's come full circle as Sandra burns his hat in the last episode of this season. But now it's time. Who will win it all? <laughs> Here it is, final tribal council. Who will win between Parvati and Sandra? Right now I feel as if Sandra is basically guaranteed Courtney, Rupert, and Colby's votes, but I'm not sure where the other two votes are coming from as she needs to get them to have the majority. But as always, we have her opening speeches and Sandra says this. I've been soul surviving since my alliance was wiped out. I got to the hero's camp. I tried to get rid of Russell three different times. I'd have to work my way around things at camp try to make sure to take all the precautionary measures to ensure that when I brought my torch in here lit, that it left here lit. And I did that by myself. Not bad, not great, but not bad. Uh, we're gonna basically ignore Russell for the most part, but keep in mind that he is delusional. He literally tells everyone that he didn't need luck to reach the end of this game. Dude's crazy. Colby is the first jury and he says, Russell, you're delusional and says, Parvati, outside of winning challenges, I'm not really sure what you did. Coach is the second jury and he flat out praises Parvati and calls Sandra a coattail rider. Amanda is the third juror and strangely enough, she doesn't even talk to Parvati or Russell. She only talks to Sandra. Tell me how your strategy was better in the game than Russell and Parvati. I wish my strategy had been better because had it been really good, Russell wouldn't be sitting here. You don't know how many nights I spent trying my hardest. How can I get Russell out of this game? And what happened was every time I went to a hero, I was like, I can't believe these people don't want Russell out. And he's taking them out one by one. And every time I go and try to do something, they run back to Russell. It was crazy. So did that strategy work for you? It didn't work for me. It just never panned out. I could never get heroes on my side. Hmm, interesting. Amanda openly rejected Parvati this season in the game and everyone hates Russell. So this could be a vote for Sandra, but it still could be a vote for Parvati. I mean, they do have history. Courtney is the fourth juror and she just praises Sandra, which results in them telling each other that they love one another. So JT is the fifth juror and... I think... I love Sandra. I think the difference between our game was that I was a huge threat from day one. Sandra was kind of a sleeper. Like, she gave 50, 60% in the challenges. So post-merge, no one thought about voting Sandra off. I had to work in those challenges because everyone was trying to vote me out. Sandra, did you only get 50 or 60% of the challenges? No, <laughs> no. No, here's the deal. When it came to the challenges, I gave 110%, but I'm not a physical person, right? But, know and you that. know what I want to tell you too? I wish I would have known that you were going to throw that thing in his back because if I could have intercepted that thing, I would have threw it right back to you <laughs> and told you, don't do this. You don't know what you're doing. Russell doesn't own his game with JT and JT doesn't like this, but it is interesting that JT let Sandra defend herself against Parvati. To be fair, Parvati had zero relationship with JT in this game and got him out with his own idol. So why not like Sandra more? Danielle, Parvati's BFF, is sixth and she just rips into Russell. She rips him a new one. Jerry is seventh and when she asks Russell a question, he lies and Parvati exposes said lie. But in an unexpected twist, Candace is the eighth juror and she says Russell unnecessarily hurt people. She says, Parvati, you were kind of like a spouse in an abusive relationship and I don't respect that. Candace says, tonight I'm voting based on how you treat people. And wow, I was not expecting this. If Candace and JT vote Sandra, then she has this in the bag easily. We then get Rupert as the last juror and sitting here listening to your answers makes me feel even worse about my gameplay. You opened the door up for us and we kept slamming it in your face. I want to say thank you for all the heroes, whether they give you their vote or not. You deserve a big thank you. You're welcome. 
Look, don't make me emotional. Well, let's do this thing. Let's see if Sandra really has five votes to become the first ever two-time winner of Survivor, or if Parvati will take that crown instead. Sandra, in this game, the line between hero and villain was blurred most of the time. But you work hard, you put family first, and you always stay true to yourself. And that makes you a true hero to me. It's not girl. I'm honored that I get to write your name down again and give you a million dollars. Love you. I'll write your name again, and if I'm up there in the final three, you'll still give me the million dollar vote. First vote. Poverty. Sandra. Poverty. Two votes, Poverty. Sandra. We are tied again. Two votes, Poverty. Two votes, Sandra. Poverty. That's three votes, Poverty. We're tied again. Sandra. Sandra. The winner of Survivor Heroes vs. Villains. Sandra. waited all season to do some sort of epilogue, and like with Natalie and Russell before, it feels right to do with Russell and Sandra and a little bit of Parvati. You see, at the reunion show, after Russell has seen himself lose Survivor twice now for the same reason both times, he doesn't get it. He doesn't get why he lost, and he tries to downplay Sandra. Problem is the game. I think, that, I think there is a flaw in the game. A flaw in the game of Survivor? Yes. Okay. If she can win the game twice, there is a flaw in the game. What wow. needs to happen is America needs to have a percentage of the vote. You still wouldn't win if they that, had a percentage no. of the vote. You I still won last would season. not win. Our show is not that. Our show is very clearly defined in that you take a group of people, you put them in one situation, you vote out people, and in the end, the last group, that jury, decides who they think deserves it. This isn't a game in which you include America. That's a different game. Do you think about the fact that the social game is something you're missing? I don't care about that fact. The problem with Russell, and I think what he's trying to say to you, is that he doesn't play the game to win. And it's clear in his strategy. He plays a good game to get to the end, but he doesn't play a game to win the game. And that's where he and I differ. And you play the game to win? I do play the game to win. When have you won? I haven't. But I Just guarantee, saying. given the opportunity, I'd gladly go back and kick your ass all over the ice. <laughs> you know what? Let's make it happen. All right, you make it happen. That could be a future season. Rob versus Russell. Does the fact that you're the only person who've won, who has won twice, does that make you best player ever? It makes me the queen. I mean, I have two titles. What else can you ask for? What? I always, I, I go out there and my goal is to make it to the end and I make it to the end and I win. You can't beat that. Boston Rob is dead on. Russell doesn't get it. He plays a destructive game. He makes enemies while others make friends. And that's why people let him get to the end this season, at least because everyone knew they could beat him. So we go to the next day when Sandra gets her million dollar check. And this time, Julie Chen, host of Big Brother, asked Parvey and Russell what they think. Sandra had a lot of people campaigning for her. And tribal. I mean, Courtney was like, that's my girl. Candace stood up and was like, she's a hero. And everyone was just giving Sandra glowing reviews. So after that tribal council, I was like, I think Sandra got this one. Mm. Russell, how are you feeling this morning? I, I, <laughs> I, I feel great. You know why? Why? I got player of the game. I didn't get one vote, but I still got player of the game. Yeah. How, how does do, that happen? I was going to ask you. I don't know. How I'm do asking you, you. How do you feel about the fact that you made it all the way to the end, and not one single person, not even Jerry, voted for you. I don't, I don't understand it. Obviously, the public don't understand it either, because I got player of the game. Well, it's not designed to be played where the public gets a voice. Right. I think there is a flaw in the system. Well, let me just say this. How's your singing? How's your singing? I'm gonna try. I'm trying out for American Idol. Because that's a different yeah. game, and it's I'm, called I'm, American I'm, I'm, Idol. I'm gonna see how that works for me. <laughs> so let's break this down. How is Sandra Diaz Twine as a character? Sandra was basically the same person she was in Pearl Island's good and bad. It was comforting in a sense when we have players like Colby and JT who seem to be different than the last time we saw them. But uh, Sandra and Rupert, they were basically the same as the first time we saw them, despite them both having won a million dollars. Sandra may have been mostly ignored in the pre-merge, but her post-merge shenanigans more than made up for it, especially her rivalry with Russell. Out of 34 character moments shown on the show, 23 were anti-heroic and 11 were villainous, making Sandra Diaz Twine an anti-hero character on Survivor Heroes 
versus villains. Now, how is Sandra Diaz Twine as a strategist? Anybody but me. That was her strategy. And hey, it worked in Pearl Islands and it worked again here. She played under the radar, let people blow up each other's games. And all the while she made friends, didn't go full villain and made sure she was on the right side of the Russell line. Parvati found herself on the wrong side and it cost her. While Sandra targeted Coach's literal punching bag and gained the hero's respect. Because at the end of the day, remember, Survivor is only about two things. One, reaching the end, which Russell does very well. And two, convincing your jury to vote for you, which Russell does not do well. Everything else is fluff. Out of 49 strategic moments shown on the show, 36 were smart and 13 were dumb, making Sandra Diaz Twine a smart strategist on Survivor, heroes versus villains. Thank you for watching and doubly thanks for liking and subscribing. See you all next time.